2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And last Sunday we had went through verse 8 in our Sunday school class. And I'll tell you what, I, I, really, <clears throat> I really thank God for um, this church and, and continuing to designate a time to have Sunday school. Because a, a lot of churches, they don't, they don't have that. It's just you go for Sunday service, and they fill in other times. But it's, it's good to have that, and I thank God for it. I thank God for those that, are, that, that feel compelled to come and to listen when they can. I know people's got things going on a lot of times, and they can't be here. But it's, it's a blessing to know that God has provided this for us. And I, I'm thankful for that. Um, I want to I want to st- uh, start this morning in verse eight, and then we're going to pick up and go on from there. Second Timothy chapter two, in verse eight, Paul here is is writing. He says, "Remember that Jesus Christ, of the seed of David, was raised from the dead." according to my gospel. Verse 9, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. And I will stop right there just for a moment. <clears throat> Remembering that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead, Paul said, according to my gospel. He, he, he claimed that as his gospel, his message that he first and foremost promoted throughout all the churches that God gave to him. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the foundation of of Christianity. To know that the word of God that it is based upon, squarely upon, that Jesus Christ through infallible proofs, even historical proofs, is not dead, but he is alive. Alive forevermore. It was only a borrowed tune. It was only for a short time that he knew that he, he, he wasn't going to need it very long. And I thank God for that this morning, that we serve a risen Savior. He's, he's, he's not as others who have come and gone, leaders that have come and gone and movements that have been started by those leaders and things throughout history. They, they are dead. But Jesus Christ is alive. He is alive. And we know that we can serve him in the same life that he is living today. And, I, and I, I pray this morning that that will be the central theme as I, with the help of the Holy Spirit, bring this out to us this morning. The life, Paul said, that I now live. The life that I now live, he says. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The the life that I now live. We are are in a life today that we're now living. And it's crucial and so important for us to understand the effect that we have on those in this world. But that the through the life that we live, the life that we uh, show others. And the good thing about it is, it's the Lord doing all the showing, as long as we're trusting in Him, as long as we're abiding in Him, abiding in the vine, if you will, to know that Jesus said that I am the vine, ye are the branches. And we must continue to abide in the vine to know that that, that's where the fruit of God is produced in our life. 
fruits unto God to bring glory unto the Father. This, this particular part is something that I don't really want to talk about, but it needs to be mentioned, is the word suffer trouble. In verse 9, he says, wherefore, wherein I, I suffer trouble. You know, it's, it's one of those things that if you don't talk about it, it's still there. It's not going to go away. But the good thing about it is it's, it's not going to get worse if you do talk about it. A lot of times people think that about patience. They thought, oh, well, don't talk about patience. Well, the Bible says you have need of patience. We, we need patience to be worked in us. So we need to talk about it. We need to learn of it. But here Paul is giving us this word. He says, wherein I suffer trouble. He says, through this gospel, my gospel, that I have presented unto the world, I'm suffering. I'm suffering. He says, as a, even as an evil doer. Now, I want to just in brief look at some of the sufferings Paul went through, through the scripture. And something that I, I don't take this lightly, and I don't want to cut it come across lightly. But, you know, there are some real sufferings even taking place today among God's people. And I don't take that lightly. None whatsoever. It's, we don't really know the things that we may be called to suffer with. We don't really know. But we do know this. That even as Jesus Christ went and suffered many things for us, we know that in Him we have hope. We know that in Him we have strength. We know that in Him we have a reason not to give up. The old song, even as the Spirit of God moved in this place last Sunday, He says, because He lives. Because He lives. And, and the altars, altars begin to fill up for people to understand and know it's because Jesus Christ is alive that I can go on that I can face whatever situation that I have to face. It's, it's knowing that. It's living that. It's living that life. And here Paul is saying, the, Paul the apostle, we, we read of how the, the, the sufferings that he endured. I mean, it is unbelievable. If you just take a light look at it, the sufferings that he endured for the gospel's sake. And I thank God that he did. Because the gospel was preserved. It was not diluted. It was not watered down. It didn't lose the authenticity of the gospel because it was trusted into Paul. God's chosen vessel to bring the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ unto the Gentile world. That was... He, he, he considered himself, that was, that was him. That was his duty. That was the calling God put upon his life. The apostles sent unto the Gentiles. And this man, Paul, he, he, he suffered in the time when, you know, we, we look back in history sometimes and we think, well, that, you know, everybody had it hard then. But no, the suffering is always great whenever the truth is at stake. No matter the time, no matter the era, no matter the, the, the goings and the comings of the world, even today, the day and time that you and I live in. Now, I don't want to I don't, I don't want to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to, up here trying to say that we are not suffering enough, okay? I'm not, I don't want to say that. And that's not my message to, to say that. But the way that you and I, we approach this, I believe, is that by our faith, to be steadfast in our faith, to not move it to other things, 
to be strong in the grace, if you will, as we begin in, in chapter 2 of this second Timothy. He said to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. We can't expect to use half measures. We've got to be in all the way. And there's suffering that comes at times because of that. But I believe that the grace of God is more than enough. Amen. It's able. God is able. And he's able to make all grace abound toward us, the scripture says. Sufferings, I believe, always precedes glory. Think about that just for a minute. Sufferings always precedes glory. The glory that shall be revealed. You know, we have a life that we're living here today. And we're looking for a better place, aren't we? We're looking for a home eternal. We're looking for a place where there is no more sin. No more death and dying. No more discouragement. No more failures. And the list is long, but we understand that we're looking, we're looking ahead. We have the hope of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that means that while we're here, that we have a duty and we have a calling of God to expect and to know that when the sufferings, when we are entering into those sufferings, not that we don't suffer every day, because we do it in, in, in different ways and different things, and it's different degrees, different people. And I, I can't answer that why some are called to suffer more than others. I, I can't answer that. I don't know. But I believe that the greater the suffering and the more that we yield that unto God, the glory that will be revealed is, is monumental. The glory that will be revealed. And it's, and it's, a, it's a sure thing that's coming. I want to I read this. He says, verse 10, I want to pick back up. He says, therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation to obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. We're not talking about something that's just for a little bit of time. We're not talking about, you know, having uh, the reward, all the rewards that people look at of having while we're here on earth. He says that is for an eternal glory. And, you know, it's sometimes it's good to just stop and ponder eternity and the life that we have here now. There's no comparison. There's no comparison to where we're at now when we look at eternity. And I've heard Sister Allen mention it before, even that even if we have to live here on earth in misery, Every single day of our life and being a Christian is still worth it. So it says she came to that conclusion that if she had to do that, she was going to do it. But the good news is, the good news is that by the grace of God changing us and working in us, he turns our misery into joy. He turns our weeping into laughter. He turns the hardships that we face that are produced in us a purpose and a plan of God working in our life. He says even in, for in going on into with eternal glory. This obtaining the salvation is what I'm talking about. That we have this life that we're living. We're living it and we're living it with the hope of salvation to know that that's the prize. That's, the, that's what we're reaching for. That's the crown that we must obtain. 
It's all about how we finish. That's why it's important that we understand that when discouragements and trials and hardships that we're faced in life, we're not to get bitter. We're not to get angry. But we're to keep going and worship and praise the Lord of glory. Giving him all glory that's due in his name. Because I'm going to tell you what. There's nothing that can come and separate the child of God from the love of God. Except that we do not forfeit. Except that we do not give up. Except that we do not quit. Except that we do not enter into the place of unbelief. I want us to go real quickly in 2 Corinthians. And we're going to be looking at several scriptures there from time to time. So you might want to just put you a little bit of a, a mark there. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I want to just look real quick at some things Paul mentioned. I guess I should have had my page marked. <clears throat> Verse 23, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. For of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, a day and a night I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which comes upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Much, much was the burden of Paul, even throughout the things that he suffered without, but even on when it come to the churches and hearing from God and giving to the churches the things that God had for them to hear. Huge responsibility that he had. Spiritually speaking, the burden that must have been there. But there was something else I want to I want to remind us of back in chapter four of Second Corinthians. He says Chapter 4 and verse 7, he says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. He knew that this was, this was something that a lot of times people lost sight of. He knew that it's something that he had to stay focused on. As you and I, we have to stay focused to know that this is, this is for eternity. This is something that's not just going to be here a little while then gone but it's forevermore now I want to look where Jesus talked a little bit about in Matthew chapter 16 and looking at uh, I want to pick up in verse 15 First of all, 
I want to, well, let me look at verse 13. He said, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias and others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, but who do you say that I am? I'm going to stop right there just for a minute. Who do you say that I am? He asked his disciples. When we know, we've, we've looked at this many times, no doubt, and we know that even as verse 16, I want to read it. He said, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. This, this, is, this is what's important when you want to talk about what's important and what's not important, this is what's important. That we believe and know who Jesus is. And that we know that in that, and that we're living that, that we know that, that sufferings, that even as, as he was called to suffering, and as Paul was called to suffering, all that would follow and all that who would live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And I understand this is, this is not something that people, you know, like to hear. This is not something that, but every Christian, every child of God has to answer and know in their heart this question. But who do you say that I am? Now, I want to just skip down real quick like to verse 21. He said, from that time forth, Jesus began to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto, thee, unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. And Jesus said unto his disciple, If any man will come after me, lest he deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his work. See, Jesus came the first time, and he was called into suffering. But when he comes back, it'll be unto glory. The same as you and I, while we're here on this earth, we're going to go through some sufferings. We're going to go through some hardships and trials and tests. But we've got a glory coming. We've got a glory coming. That's something that we, we, we need to remind ourselves of, church. This is something that will get you through when it's, when it's hard. This is something that will get you through tough times to know that there's glory coming. There's glory coming. There's glory coming, but we can't stop. We can't give up. We can't lose heart. Don't quit. Don't stop believing, not even for a moment. Because there's too much at stake. There's too much at stake to know that the glory of God that will be revealed, it will be for eternity. Second Corinthians 12 and 9, I'm not going to go there. The Lord told Paul that, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. When the, Paul was given the thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet him, that he would not be exalted above measure. He said, I sought the Lord three times for it. And the Lord answered and said, my grace is sufficient for you. If God's grace was sufficient for Paul and the suffering that Paul endured, 
We need to know and take assurance that God's grace is enough for us. It's enough for every believer. It's enough for everyone who would call upon the name of Jesus. It's enough to know that his grace working in us, changing us and bringing us and making us into what he wants us to be, it is enough. It is enough and it's all that we need. He is the one that supplies it. He is the one that has fulfilled it. He is the one that is working it out. And we need to focus on that. I need to focus on that. The grace of God working in my life. Romans chapter 8. Go there with me, if you will, quickly. Romans chapter 8, verse The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared. They're not worthy to be compared. They're not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So look up this morning. Look up and know that the sufferings that we're going through today, it's only for just a little time. It's only for just a little while. Though it may seem like it takes a long time to get in there, I said there's glory coming. There's glory coming. But the good news about it is, and I hope I get time to get into it, that this life that we now live, as I mentioned a while ago, we live it by the faith of the Son of God. So even when it's bad, it ain't that bad. <laughs> when it's bad, it ain't that bad. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's what God wants to give us. That's what he wants to reveal to us. That's what he, by the revelation of God, he wants to give that to his people. He wants us to know that. He wants us to walk in that. That the grace of God be revealed in our lives. He said if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. And we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Planted together. That means that you and I be planted not together with each other but with Christ. That we're planted together with Christ in his death. We have the guarantee of God now that we, are, we can access this resurrection life. That even as Christ has been resurrected from the dead. And yes, we have the hope and know that one day when, you know, the Lord calls us home. And we're going to be resurrected to live in a glorified body. But you know, that ain't just what that's talking about. He said, if you have been planted together in the likeness of his death, that's also in Romans chapter 8. If you have been planted together in the likeness of his death, I believe that you can look at it in the same way and know that we are planted in his resurrection as well. Yes. So we're growing up into God. That's right. We're being raised up into him to produce the fruits of righteousness within our life. To live in the godliness that God has provided for his people. But we can't do it in our own ability. We can't do it in our own willpower, our own strength. It's the grace of God working in us. Changing us. Bringing us to where he wants us to be. He says, <clears throat> go back now. Um, second uh, Timothy. Reading on, he says, It is a faithful saying, verse 11. It is a faithful saying, If we be dead with him, if we be dead with him, if we are planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also live with him. See, we need to lose the mentality that e eternal life starts when we die. Yes. We need to... 
we need to live eternal life today, in eternal life today. We, we live today in him. We live with him today. It's not something that we're waiting to receive. Believe that. But we have, it, don't, it, it can't be reversed. We have to be dead in it. He says, it is a faithful saying. I believe that. It is a faithful saying. I, it's, it's ain't some maybe kind of thing. It's faithful. It's just something that we can take to the bank and know that it's real. We can know that it will spend in God's economy. It's a faithful saying. No doubt whatsoever should enter our minds. No matter what anybody else says, it's what God says. It is a faithful saying, if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. He's alive. Thank you, Jesus. Now look at verse 12. He says, if we suffer, mm. we shall what? Join the heirs. He says, we shall reign with him if we suffer we shall reign with him in Revelation chapter 3 and I don't remember exactly the verse but as he is given that going on into I think I got it wrote down here somewhere let me see yeah 15 through 21 you can look that up later for I don't have time right now but <clears throat> he's talking to the the end time church but he says, to him who overcomes, will I grant him to reign with me in my throne. Yes, Lord. To reign with Christ in his throne. I don't, I don't know about, I want to be there. Yes. I want to be a part of that. If whatever it is that we, we have to do until we get there, I mean, I believe God's grace can give us, I don't want to make light, once again, of nobody's problems and situations, but I want to glorify God. Yes. Know that he is enough. I believe that he is enough. Whatever we would face, he is enough. Yes. Well, we've got a promise that if we suffer with him, we'll reign with him. If we deny him, verse 12, he will also, also he will deny us. Very, very important that we don't just take part of this and omit the other part. We don't need to forsake for one moment, as I said a while ago, our faith being placed in the finished work of Christ. It's, 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 it's life or death. It's life or death. You have, you have something? Okay. You want I believe that's the suffering he's talking about. It's me not trying to fix me, or me not trying that's right. to fix something. That is truly the suffering he's talking about. That's right. The, the true meaning of suffering with him is that. And I, I don't know about you guys, I don't get the eternity. Not with my little feeble mind. I, I, I can't get it, it's, it's beyond. That's right, attention. that's right behind comprehension, you know, sitting there when he's talking, and I'm saying about what individuals used to say about me, about people having grandchildren. You don't get it till you got one. <laughs> you don't get it till you got one. Yeah. You know, and then you get it. We won't get this until we get there. Praise God. Yeah, and I believe that, you know, sitting there listening, I, I, I believe that's living by faith. You know, here it is, and we keep doing the next right thing, and depending on what God did on the cross, that's living, truly living Amen. by faith. And the suffering for me is not everything what somebody does to me. Right. Sometimes the suffering for me, again, going back to the cross, is me not getting them because they got me. Try it. Get that. Try it. Me not getting even. That's suffering sometimes for me. That's right. Because my flesh want to give them back. And when I don't, that's suffering for Christ because I'm looking to Him to finish that. Praise God. Thank you. 
earlier when I read through that, when Jesus said, if any man, let any man that would come after me deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That's, of course, that's not talking about, you know, doing without the comforts necessarily that, you know, people say, well, I'm not going to have, enjoy this and be comfortable in this. I'm going to do it for the cause of Christ. That's not what that's talking about. But to deny ourselves, even as Sister Rose brought that out, you know, they ain't a person in here that from time to time don't want to get even whenever somebody offends us. But let's stop just for a minute. If we be dead with Christ, if we be dead with Christ, we now are living his life. And boy, who... I don't think we read nowhere where Jesus was going out and getting even. I mean, he he done always done what was in the Father's will. And the thing about it is, what can you do to somebody that's dead? Whatever you do, then they're not. It's not going to hurt them, is it? They're dead. Dead to ourself, denying ourself taking up one's cross and to know that the benefits provided far outweigh the trouble and the suffering that we go through. The benefits are there for us. The grace provided for us is there. Praise God. Verse 14. Uh, Verse 13. He says, If we believe not, yet he abides faithful, he cannot deny himself. Even if we are faced and we, we ultimately fail, it never changes the Word of God. If we're faced with problems and we're faced with, with troubles and we don't pass the test, so to speak, or if we just throw our hands up and say, I give up, I, I just, I'm not doing this no more. I don't think none of you are going to do that. But whoever, if anybody would do that, it does not change the word of God. God is faithful. He is faithful and he cannot deny himself. He will readily accept any person that comes to him believing. On the basis of their faith, believing. Even though we may have given up on somebody, doesn't mean God has. He says he is faithful. Now, if his hand is extended and it is not, re, you know, not received, he says now he can't deny himself. He's going to be our savior today or our judge tomorrow. So we need to, we need to know that. We need to remember that. Now let's let's move on. Now I'm I'm running out of time. Verse <clears throat> verse fourteen. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. <clears throat> the things that we spend our time doing, the things that we do in our time. The Bible says in one place there it says to redeem the time for the days are evil. We need to make best of of our time that we have here on this this earth, this life that we live. And the things that we do and and how it affects others, God looks at very seriously. What we say and what, what we lead people to believe, but more important to anybody that shares the truth, the, the message of the gospel, as Paul is bringing this out, that we put the, of these things, that we put them in remembrance. First of all, we need to remember the importance of it. We need to remember that we have a part in it and that we charge them, he says, before the Lord that they strive not with words no profit. To, he says, but to the subverting of the hearers. So it's under, we need to understand that the things that we are responsible, first of all, for what we say Period. And we start talking and, and trying to share the Bible and share the, the Lord's plan with people. We are responsible, big time, 
for what we say. We do not want to cause anybody to lose their faith, first of all. But we want to know and, and to, to bring the truth of the gospel out there. Jesus Christ, he's still the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Yesterday, he is still saving the lost. He is still healing the sick. He is still delivering the captives. Jesus Christ, he is coming again, church. And that we need to know that. We need to be telling people and to let that be a part of our conversation when it comes into play. Now, if it's not the cross, I'm, on, I'm almost going to say this. This is kind of blunt. Lives are at stake if it's not the cross. Lives are at stake if it's not the cross because there's, there's so many ways error can come and attach itself to one's faith. And that the individual's faith is up for grabs, if you will. And the enemy is, is ready to try to come in and get somebody off the, the right road and put them on the wrong road. So it's very important that we know that if it's not the cross, that we, we're in danger. It may not seem like that way to begin with, but the truth is that it is. Now I, wanna, I wanna look into verse 15, that's where I'm gonna stop. And I wanna share this because this is something that the Lord showed me that I believe that I had a, I never looked at it this way. And I think that maybe it'll bless someone here today. He says, verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now if you just take and break this verse of scripture down, I'm not going to have the time to go through it all. But I'm going to tell you something. It's not up to you, and it's not up to me, in our own power, in our own strength, in our own willpower, if you will, because if we look at this verse and we misunderstand what it says, it doesn't say, now listen to how I say this, it doesn't say study, comma, to show thyself approved unto God. It says study to show thyself approved unto God. Everybody wants to, to be approved of God, don't they? Everybody wants to be approved of God. But it's, it's not, not, he's not saying that, and you know that, you know that this is not what it's saying, that we're not supposed to read the Word of God and we're not supposed to, to, to know the Word of God. But it, it's not because we spent 14 hours today studying the Word of God that we're going to be approved. It's not that, because then we have made it a work. And we're trying to please God in our works. That when we study something to do it, that means that we be diligent in what we're doing. And that we do it speedily. This, this word is, is uh, defined in the Greek dictionary. I looked it up and how it was defined. This word that was used in this sentence. That we make a diligence, that we make haste in this and we do it speedily to do that we know that this is the approval that God gives them because we are living this life based on the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's about living in that. It's about knowing that it's the grace of God flowing to us, working in us, changing us. That's how we are approved unto God. But we make a diligence in our faith to know that. We be diligent in our faith to know that. That we don't stop. That we don't become discouraged in that. As a workman, he says, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. A workman that, and one thing in closing, in Luke 9 and 62, he says, that no man having put his hand to the plow no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. 
we need to keep going forward. We need to don't stop. Don't stop. Don't quit. Keep believing. Keep your focus. Keep your faith in the right place. And it's the grace of God working in us, changing us. And I remind you as I leave, if we be planted together in the likeness of his death, that we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Thank you all for your attention. And God bless you. I hope you got something to help you. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen.